Welcome. We are live now on Facebook. <laughs> are we really? Yeah. Are we really live yeah. on Facebook? And we're actually recording. We are here. With the help of Kimmy, we got our technical difficulties worked out once again. Thank you, Kimmy. Um, welcome to our Tuesday speaker meeting. It always takes us a minute to get going here, but we are always so thrilled once we do because we're offering a lot of value and entertainment sometimes as well. But today is chock filled full of value when we're talking about assets and tools that we use for real estate. We are the She Spark Society. We are women led and women operated and women guided um, people in real estate who identify as women who help each other out instead of working against each other. So we are a collaboration of mamas, humans, women, all the things, and we come together to offer value, support, collaboration, and resources. So thanks for joining us today. And we have Karuna Rockwell on here with us, who some of you may know from Asheville, North Carolina. She's a realtor and a rock star and has a lot of value to give when thinking about um, uh, Canva. Um, she loves it. She loves designing and just diving deep into it. So thank you so much for sharing what you know with us today, because it's definitely been a hurdle for me. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. Um, and thank you, Kimmy. Glad to be here. And um, well, I'd prepared to ask the audience questions, but I guess that's well, yeah. So Pretty. just so you know, we're live streaming on Facebook so people can watch it easily later. So it's okay. um, not going to be as interactive today, but I can be your guinea pig if you need me yes. to. Please do. You're going to, it's just going to be, then you're the person I'm asking questions. First of all, do you have Canva Pro? I do have Canva Pro. I signed oh. up for it a long time ago before I even knew that I really needed it. And I'm so glad mm -hmm. that I have it. I don't mm -hmm. even know the difference anymore. Because it's so worth yeah, it. Yeah, it, it, it's absolutely worth it. And so that was my first point. Like, if you don't have Canva Pro, just bite the bullet. You're going to have so much more available to you in terms of tools. Like, I can't do any of what I do without Canva Pro. So that's um, the first. And then what would you say your level of expertise is? Like, do you dabble once in a while? Are you in there daily? I, I am not what? in there daily. I am in there only when necessary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, only when my back is against the wall and I have to be in there. And normally I'm really bad about this, like posting just list. I'm better about posting just listed, but really bad about posting just clothes. And yeah. I get really intimidated with um, trying to find things is one of the things yeah. I have a hard time with is the file organization. It seems like when I go back to look for something, it's never in the spot that I think it would be. Mm -hmm. Like what kind of things? I'm just curious, like a, a design you've worked on previously or um, yeah some, so like a flyer thing. or um gotcha. I do a lot of logo stuff in there and play yeah. around with that because I really yeah. do enjoy the whole process um and I've used it for years and years but I'm yeah. just trying to think like I just have not found a good a good system around Canva where I can easily access things so I'm thinking that yeah. um I'm just missing out on something yeah um all right, well, I'm gonna dive in. Um, let's see, shall we try the sharing thing again? Yay, okay. And right now, of the 100,000 browser times, where is the one I want? Oh, come on. Oh, I'll just go over here. So, seriously, I have too many browser tabs open. Now I can't find the one I'm sharing. Okay, here we go. That's so weird. Never mind, that's not the one I want to share. You know what you do really well, which I saw attached to an email or something, is you do a whole buyer's 
guide or a relocation yeah. guide. Yeah, I love it, doing the guides. That is so smart to do, to just be able to offer some sort of assistance or value to clients without kind of having them commit or maybe you do maybe it's behind like a data wall where they have to put in their email or no I like to give a lot away for free sorry I'm not finding the screen it's so weird that's oh here we are oh I know why it's flipping me out it has a different banner than normal okay can you see me click on the browser bar here on the yes I can see it celebrating 10 years of Canva yeah and so in terms of like your issue of losing stuff I you can see here I don't worry about that I just let it be a mess I make sure to title my stuff so if I'm ever looking for like my brochure I'm I search here, but I can't be in templates. I have to be in projects. And then there it is, the final copy of my brochure. Um, so that's how I manage finding stuff because there is a filing system, but I'm not that organized. So I just search for anything I need. And that's just like a little tip to know that you need to search your projects, not templates. So exactly. That's what I'm not doing. And I'm like, it's not yeah. here. No, I know. It's super confusing. It took me a couple of times to be like, wait, I know this is in here. Why is I'm why am I not finding it? So yeah, you just just make sure to toggle the right thing. So you're searching your projects, not templates. So Got it. thank you. The thing I love most about Canva is I hate starting with a blank slate. Um so whenever I want to start something. I usually look at this little, like you might want to try one of these and then there should be, okay. And then I click on Facebook posts because that's what I feel like doing. It'll open to a blank page, but then you have all these templates here and you can search for templates. So I do need to do it just closed. So I thought I'd do that as an example. So I searched the templates for, you know, real estate. I like to look for real estate related. And this is just fun because it gives me like, let's see what other designs they have. And, and there might be one that I feel like playing with. Like um, this one looks fun. I kind of like, I feel like it'll suit the house that I have. So, um, a few design points. Um, you always want to stick to two to three colors, two to three fonts, and you want to make sure to use grid snapping, um, which means when I'm playing with this, I want to see where the lines are and I want it to kind of be in line with modern home. And do you see that dotted line that comes across? So they're centered to each other. If I get right in the middle, is it? bright enough I can do yeah I know it, I know what you're okay. talking about it'll appear okay. it'll appear. yeah so that I know it's centered with modern home because there's that dotted line that goes through both so I leave it there so you just want to make sure um that things are lining up with each other so it has like your eye can relax when you're looking at it it's not like trying to take in the different spacing and all of that um so another trick that I use a lot is um, like I want to move book now to line up with where I move that. So, but it's two different elements. So I click on book now and I want to make sure that outline is highlighted because when I double click now, I would be editing the words. Um, and command Z, at least on a Mac is your best friend because that undoes what you just did. So I'm always, you know, sometimes I um, accidentally, like say I accidentally get this out of line and I just command Z, it pops back to where it was. So I want to click book now and then I hold down shift and I click the box behind it. So now 
they're both selected and I can make them a little group. So now I know they're gonna move together. So I can now recenter it with the start at price because it got out of center and now I'm centering it again. So yeah, just the command Z to undo what you did because I'm always fiddling and sometimes accidentally move the wrong thing and then grouping you hold the shift as you click on both elements and then you say group. And you can group more elements. Like I could group these three elements because I like how they're spaced together. So I want them to stay together. So then I click group and then I can play around. Like maybe this is up here and this might go in the middle. And maybe I want, instead of like, want it in being centered with modern home, maybe I want the top of these words to be lined up with modern home so that, yeah, that doesn't look good to my eye. So I would go a little lower. Like sometimes the grid snapping, like, I don't know where it's thinking the, oh, I know where it's thinking the top of, sorry, I, this is what I do, I get lost. Um, I have a quick question for you. Yeah, so you were talking it. about, two to three different colors, two to three fonts. Now, do mm -hmm. you try to use the same fonts on every design? Ooh, yeah. Do you save so, them somewhere? Or yeah. do you have like so, a- I, This template? is my next thing. This is my next thing. So I'm okay. getting there. Um, so once I kind of have like the template I want, and I might, if I want to um, see what different ones look like, I'll just add another page and I'll be like, hmm, what about... There's another one I saw that I like the look of. Yeah, this is similar. So what about something like that? And then I might, um, I'm getting this ready because I want to show you the branding thing that um, is really cool. And it's fun when you can see it applied to a bunch at once. All right, so we'll do this. So we've got three different templates that I'm checking out that I like. So then, this is what you need to set up. You go over to the brand tab and I have my brand logo, um, my brand font and my brand colors already put in here. So if you wanna do a new one, cause I have a, a few different, um, okay. So then I have three different brand tab, like brand groupings that I have set up. So I have Asheville Dream Home, the Neuro Spicy coaching I do, and then the design work I do. And so I have, and I can switch between those here. So I can just say, okay, now I want to work on my design. So in my design, design colors, excuse me. Um, but I'll go back to this one because it's the most filled out. This second palette is a property management brand I'm working on. So that's why that's there. Um, normally it's just this one palette. So then I say, shuffle, let's see. I wanna, so now see, did you see how it automatically, I'll do undo so you can see again. Yeah, I gotta see that again. So yeah, we are already so, in the template and then you're going to the brand. I mean, we're already in like the regular yeah. for sale template. Then we're going to the brand, brand template. On this side. Brand, on yep. this side, I'm in brand. And I want to see what my brand colors look like on these templates. So I just go over here to my palette that I already set up when I edited my brand colors. And I say shuffle. And so now it's popped in my brand colors. And I actually like how those look with this. And then down here, it'll pop up and say, do you want it like, it's basically asking me, do you want to apply it to all pages? And I say, yes, because I want to see all of these templates with my brand colors. And say I'm not like totally like this last one, I kind of want to see what it looks like with a different combo of my brand colors. So I'll just kind of click through and it automatically, and I'm like, oh, I kind of like that. Let's see what it does to the other ones up here. Oh, that's kind of fun. <laughs> oh my goodness. I never knew that. That is such yeah, a I, I love watching your face. Yeah, it's so fun. So I know a lot of agents sign up for like 
um, you know, subscriptions that um, give you social media templates. So you open them up in your Canva, you already have your brand package ready to go and you just click shuffle and then I can, um, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's see, sometimes I don't do this with fonts as much because I don't like the way I've set up my fonts, but usually, Oh, I need to click on, like, I'm going to turn that to my phone. No, still not doing what I want. Usually it'll change the fonts too. And I'm not sure why it's not doing that right now. So when we're looking at fonts, like say we've hired someone to do a logo yeah. for us and they have yeah. assigned a font or two or three that we yeah. use for our brand, then we just import those into Canva no matter what they are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can add fonts. So if I go here, it, there. I, so I clicked on a text box. I opened the font menu, and then down here it says upload a font. So you just need to get the file, the font file, and you can upload it. There are a couple. Let's see, these two I uploaded. Um, so there's there's websites online where you can download fonts or your designer should have them to for you to download or be able to tell you where to find them. So is this the function that you use the most is for like social media home showcasing? Um, I was going to show you like the main projects I do. Um, okay. So one is social media posts. There's you can do reels. Um, and then I've been doing a lot of investor pitching for a new project. And so you can do presentations. Um, and yeah, so I'll get to that in a second. So those are kind of some of the things. Um, and then just at this point, then I start, okay, I want like an this part, you should probably know that you upload. So this is the home that just sold. So I'm going to drop that back here. And that's why I kind of like this one, because it seemed like a similar style. Um, so then one thing to know is you can double click on the photo and adjust where it lines up. Um, so see how it was cutting it off there. I don't really want that. I want it a bit more centered like so. And I kind of want the house to be showing more. So just gonna make it a little bigger so I can move it up a bit more because then see the house is kind of coming up further. And to me, it looks a little, let's see. Eh, they change stuff around. I'm not seeing what I want. No, anyway. Um, oh, rotate, it's right here. It looks a little crooked to my eye, so I'm just gonna play with there. So this is my happy place. I get now it looks really crooked to me, but anyway, um, I like to just like fiddle with these kind of things. Make sure I'll move this stuff around and make sure the fonts. <laughs> that's not what I wanted to do. Um, that's what I mean about the command Z. Is I'm constantly accidentally clicking on the wrong thing and moving it, and um, I want it just not deal with that. So another thing that's really helpful for me, sometimes when you're moving things around, it gets frustrating. Like you just, cause it kind of hop, like because of the grid snapping, it'll kind of hop from one place to another and it drives me crazy. So I just use the up and down arrow and side to side arrow. This is called a nudge. Um, on your phone, you can nudge. There's a a setting you can click on your phone if you're doing edits on your phone and it's called nudge. Um, so I do like a little up and down and that helps you kind of refine where you want it 
without having to like deal with the snapping. Um, another feature that I find really helpful is um, one of the editing, photo editing, the background remover. And it's not, you know, it's, uh, it's auto generated, so it's not perfect, but sometimes it gets it close enough. So you have something to work with there. See, that's perfectly well, workable. If, if you have any design background and you remember like Photoshop, how you'd have to go around the edges with yeah, the exactly. mouse. Yeah. And it took like to really do it well. It yeah. took quite a long time. That's wonderful. Yeah. So it's amazing. Then all of a sudden you have this like nice clean little feature icon of you. And um, and that's a pro feature. This is a feature I use a lot, and you only get it with Canva Pro. It's the BG remover under edit photo. So that's a great tool to know. And then I'm sure since you play with logos. You know, there's all sorts of fun elements that you can search for, like um, my new business is Woven Roots Property Management. And so, like, I've been searching for different logo stuff and been playing around with kind of um, all the graphics they have. And you can search for photos, too, um, like... It's often helpful to like, okay, say you want, you don't want a graphic or a sticker, you want a photo. So then you go to photos, see all, and you might like see what they have there. Um, and in case there's super beginners, you know how that got covered. So if I want the image to go to the back, I go to position and send it. I can either go back one layer or I can send it all the way to the back. So um, it's always like if you lose an element, it's always good to know. Like I could move, I'm gonna, I'm, oh no, I wanna group that. So I could move these two smaller circles to be in front of the big circle or I could line them up like that. So that's a good tool to know is there. You, you can play around with the layers. Um, what else do I use a lot? So, yeah, let's do another project. So, um, what else? Oh, reels. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, let's just do a blank reel. There's templates for reels. Usually at the beginning, it says just like blank. Because I just want the formatting, not the content. Eh, whatever, I'll just use one of theirs. So have you done editing in, uh, videos? I have never done editing of videos in Canva. Yeah, so I'm super yeah, excited. Canva, yeah. So usually, um, like, often I do like just a reel of different photos. So I might like if I want to do a house tour, I might do just like some photos that ha like have. I click here, it'll just kind of, whoop, that's not what I wanted. Yay. And then it switches to that one. So I can turn like a, a group of photos I've taken into a reel to make it kind of like a house tour. Now, um, why would you do this? Sorry to interrupt, but why would you yeah. do this not in a platform, but in Canva? There's got to be got to be easier for some reason um I think there are better platforms I like it for like adding graphics like um if I want to do fun graphics in the video
I think, you know, there's definitely other apps that can achieve the same purpose, but Canva has set up a pretty robust platform. You can add audio. There's a whole list of audios. There's different, you know, text art you can add. Um, you can edit where, which, which portion of the photos. So for me, I use it because I know Canva pretty well. And so it's pretty easy for me to fly through. Um, I and can adjust. When when you're uploading your photos to Canva, mm -hmm. are you doing that on your desktop? Or are you doing that on your phone? Or because it seems usually, like a chore. Usually, I there's two ways I do it. I either upload to the Canva app on my phone from my photo reel because um, it will sync. So um, so that's sometimes easiest. Sometimes I just. Um, I have all Mac products, so sometimes I just airdrop the photos to my Mac, and it, so then they're there, and I can upload from there. So it depends. Um, yeah, it's not the most convenient, but it's not that you can either do either method that I talked about. And down here, you can change the duration of different sections, um, and you can animate. So. This is a better one. So I could have the letters come in in all sorts of different ways. I like disco. That was fun. Um, so you can play around with like the transitions and like different elements in each frame. So each frame is kind of its own piece. And if I want the same image, but different letters, I might. So I did um, like a right click on Mac, it's like two finger click. And I can either duplicate the page, so it's the same photo, and then I could change the text that I have so that it's the same background, but the text changes. Or another way I do this is to split the page, which, why isn't that an option? Oh, let's see. There, that's very weird. So instead of right click, if I click on these three little dots, here it's a split page. So that just split this in half. So now I could delete this here and then it's only here. So I don't know if that makes sense. I'm going a bit fast just because I want to cover one other type of um, thing. It I do does. So here. it's just the next frame with different text. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so if you want the same image but different text, you can just split them and change the text. And then what do you do um, once it's done? Then you download it and it's on a video on yeah. your phone. Okay. So downloading, like, this is a whole topic. Like there's so much you can do from Canva. Um, you can download it, you can share, you can print. I do not recommend using Canva to print. I haven't had a print come back right in like a couple of years. Like seriously, every time I try to print with them, it goes wrong somehow. But um, so I just clicked more and there are so many things you can do from Canva. So you can um, just right onto the platform. You don't have to download it and upload it. You I didn't could, you, could um, you can you can do that. You can get a link for it. You can send it to your phone. Um, you can download it. You can download a section. You can send it to your Google Drive. The thing I most do is save to a folder or present. So present I'm going to show in a different in my next thing, but that one's really fun. You can turn it into a template. Um, you can share the link with someone if you want their feedback on it. There's just so much you can do here. And I highly recommend just playing around with all these different things because it could save you a ton of time to just know what's available to you right from Canva. Um, so that's that. So let's, I don't do a ton of reels, so I'm going to leave that there. But um, I think it is a good platform for doing them. Like, especially, you know, they have all sorts of, like, 
graphics and photos you can put right from here rather than searching online for open use photos. Like there's just so much here that you can just use. So I think it's a fun um, option. Do, 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 do. Okay, so the last one I wanted to share is doing a presentation. Um, has, so I'm gonna start with templates, business presentation. Um, I'm going to, I thought I could tell it what size I want here. You can play around with filters. Um, but they might have real estate here, but yeah, so there's, it's really weird. Usually there's, um, you can filter by size, but anyway. So then I look through, yeah, so these are not the right size. Well, anyway, I just did this. What did I do? All right, let's just start with one. Sure, that's cute. All right, let's see, one of these. Oh, goodness. There's, I got into the land of Christianity without realizing it. Um, minimalist. These are kind of your all's colors. Let's play with them. I mean, this is not doing what I want it to. Where did the templates go? Okay, this is more what I'm looking for. So you can click on a template for presentations. And some of them, not any of the ones I currently have been clicking on, have more than one page available for the brand. So yeah, you can look through different templates. And these look like business cards. Yeah, they do, don't they? I think I'm going to try. I feel like we clicked on the wrong. I do too. Yeah. So I'm going to try again because I also want a smart. Here we go. Okay. I found where I want to be. So you click on a blink. Did you see how I got here well enough? I just clicked on create a blank presentation 16 to nine because that's the size I want. So I clicked on this from the, you know, the main screen. And then over here, magic design, this is what I wanted to show you all because it's saved my butt a couple of times this year because I'm a procrastinator and all of a sudden I have to present tomorrow. And so let's see, I want to, So I just wrote a really simple sentence and that is a weird so it'll kind of do a basic outline yeah I don't love that so I'm trying a different thing. All right, we'll just go with this. Looks good enough. So I say create my presentation. 
and it automatically generates nine slides. And again, I like Canva because I do not like staring at a blank page. So though this is probably not anywhere near where the presentation would end up, it's nice to have like a kind of cohesive theme, some topics I could potentially touch on. It's put in some photos. I'll show you a presentation I just put together that came out a lot better than this. because It's kind of like the AI for presentations. Is that what it is? It is. Yeah, it is. Okay. It's just integrated into Canva. So again, um, don't forget your brand hub so I can play around with what colors I like to see together. Let's try that. Apply to all pages. So that's um yeah so just always remember like once you set up your brand hub that's going to be a super convenient tool for you so i'm not going to get too in the weeds with the presentation i really just wanted to show you you can present straightly straight from canva so it opens it up and you just click through like a normal presentation but what i like even better is if you share and do present and record. Now that might freak it out if I try to do it because it's going to want to record me, but let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah. So I press record and then it, can you see this still? There's a little circle of me in the bottom. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like Loom. So you could record yeah. presentations or trainings for people yeah. and leverage that. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. So it's using the wrong camera. So I would change that because it's using my laptop camera rather than my display camera. Um, but yeah, that you can write notes in here. Um, and then you can just talk as you're going through your presentation. And then you have this nice little presentation with you talking. Um, so that that's a really fun feature that I use a lot. Um, whoop, whoop, whoop. You can cancel and discard. Thank you. Um, so yeah, that was a post, a reel, a presentation, recording. Um, just one note about um, downloading. I have a quick question. Do you yeah. like sometimes I find I just want to make a blank something like I just want to like play around with shapes and images. Yeah. And I yeah. never know which template to choose because I don't really want a template. I just want like blank. What do you do then? Yeah, it depends if I ultimately have a goal of like, it will be a Facebook post or, um, ooh, that's fun. <laughs> Canvas so fun. Um, yeah, usually I just, if I want just a blankety blank, I might um, like logo, if you want, depends if you want a rectangle or square blankety blanks. I like, if I'm just playing around, sometimes I like the logo square so I just open and then usually there's a create a blank option. That's so what I, that's that. the one I wanted because sometimes yeah. sticker mule will have yeah. deals and stickers they and I want to take one deals. really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I, I, I usually, yeah, that's where I usually just use the logo um, square. So you, yeah, you can Google a template or, you know, you can always, um, it's the wrong up here sometimes like I know what the size needs to be for a certain project so then I just do a custom size one and I do five by five it doesn't right. and then that creates a little thing so I can put in whatever and you can do those dimensions in PX inches, millimeters, centimeters. Um, so that that can be a good way to start too, especially if you know kind of the confetti browser, the cursor is really entertaining me. Um, 
Yeah, so there was one thing I wanted to show about downloading. Um, so a few things here. If you're downloading something, you always have lots of options for how you want it. Um, JPEG, PNG, PDF for emailing, PDF for print, um, web animation, video, GIF or GIF, however you say that. And then, um, oops, back to here. So download. Um, I have found if I compress, sometimes I lose elements. So I usually leave these alone. But also you should know you can just download one um, page of your design. Like sometimes I just want to download one to see what it looks like. But I don't like say I have 10 different pages and I just want page one, I'll make sure to just download page one. So those are some download tips. Um, and I find it like I use this a lot where I just want to download one page. Um, what else? Any other questions? Let me think. So um, I love the brand template project. So you're not organizing anything. So we have, I see these tabs at the top next to Canva, design, spotlight, business, education. Um, I'm guessing education yeah. is their training. Yeah, I oh. think it's. Oh, it's yeah. for teachers. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't played too much with these like directly. Like I've used a lot of these things, but I haven't gone to it from here. Um, Do you ever yeah, make I mean, graphics, like draw your own? I use Procreate for that. I don't. I don't use Canva for that. I because I have a iPad with a Apple Pencil and I draw and procreate. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely don't know all that Canva has to offer, and I highly recommend just playing around because every time I do, I find. Oh, and here's another way to get to your brand hub. So, um, like. Here's where you can set it up. You can go from the main page and um, I want to copy that to a different brand kit, but I need to set up here. This did is, you choose your fonts and your colors yourself or did yeah, you have help? I chose them. Okay, um, okay so I, I have this new brand. Okay, so I just created a new brand um, packet and I wanna go back to here cause I need to move these colors over to woven roots cause that's where they belong. So now if I go back here, woven roots now has the right color palette um, and I can, should have, Sorry, uh, I'm not going to be able to find it. I have a logo for it that I just did, but I don't know where it ended up. Oh, I think it's in pitches. There. Um, so yeah, and then you would put, and this is where I want to actually refine my Asheville Dream Home brand. I don't like, um, like this one, I always want bigger than it usually. So if I, I clicked on the font that I use for headings, it's Brittany, it's the heading font, and I want it to come up a bit bigger when I click on it. So I can change the font size. So that means when I click on adding, that text box for headings is going to come in at the size I want. Um, so you're so saying I, every time, if you have in your brand kit a I'm certain so font that you want to use for headings every time, it will universally yeah. apply it. Yeah. So here I went back to our little square. I'm going to refresh it because I, I just edited the brand. I go to text. I want to add a heading. Oh, 
yeah so that's what 80 looks like so I need to keep playing with that but um that's really big <laughs> yeah <laughs> a little big oh goodness okay let's come all the way down eh, okay something was weird there but um all my it's very odd so I think I messed something up but because they don't I got oh I know this square is very tiny um let's go back to something bigger okay <laughs> now we can okay so I add heading oh yeah this one needs to be there. try that again so this is what heading looks like at 80 there we go that's what I wanted so heading sub heading and body. So I've set, these are my fonts that I've set up in my brand kit. These are the sizes they're currently set up, which I'm, I want to refine because I don't like the sizes they come in at. Um, like I want maybe this one to come in at 18 and this one to come in at 26. So I'll put like, now I know what size I prefer for those. And so I'll go change my brand kit. So yeah, that's, um that's the brain kit and super and I like there's more that I could play with here too like titles subtitles photos like you know it's pretty comprehensive so and if you have a photo like your headshot yeah that's something so you that. keep pretty handy to use yeah, yeah exactly and you can edit photos in there for like if you have yeah. something on your nose or cheek yeah. or something yeah so this photo used to have I'll show you this photo in some versions has this like the tree and the stone wall so I used Canva I made a blank square I put the image in I removed the background and then I put one of my brand colors as the background. Um, so that's how I made this kind of more neutral image um, without having the distraction of trees and rocks and all that. So, but sometimes it's nice to have trees and rocks so I can have both here. And then like one of my first sales was a really pretty house. So I usually use it for, um, marketing so I can add that to my photos so yeah then you have all these photos and if you go over here and go to your brand kit now all these photos that I like to use are right here and I saw uh, on the side it said icons earlier is that for like social media icons yeah Not probably yeah yeah because okay. um okay. let's I'll show you so Actually, yeah, I'll show you my, so my link tree. That's another thing I am very passionate about. <laughs> I love link tree. Um, I'm actually doing my own website on Squarespace. So a lot of my link tree stuff is going to go on there. But for now, I have like a ton of um, things. And you can see here, like these icons are my brand colors. And um, I did those in Canva, like I made, um, you know, got a little square again, I chose one of their graphics that you where you can edit the colors because it's not always possible. And um, let's go back to our little, where's our little square? Yeah, so it's not, let's see, I want content covered. And yeah, so if it has a little square here with a color, you can edit the colors. Some of them, you can edit that one. Well, you'll have to take my word for it. Some of the graphics, you can't edit the colors, but these ones you can. So then I, I'm gonna change it to my brand color. And then for this, honestly, instead of downloading it, I just screenshot it and then I upload it. So LinkedIn as my contact card icon. <laughs> Did I go too fast? Your face looks. No, it's really no? cool. Okay. Yeah. And it's making me like, like watching you too. I'm wondering, is your Zoom background from Canva? 
Uh, no, that's actual wallpaper. But, oh, it's really yeah. real? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's real. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fun. cool. I have, I think I have created Zoom backgrounds in Canva. Yeah, you totally A long time can. ago. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I'm on sure. It. Yeah. It's, I, there's so much you can do. Like, this is really my happy place. I get very lost. Um, it's so fun because it's so accessible to yeah everyone to be able to yeah. do things that we previously had to hire out oh yeah no I I I ended up firing my web designer actually because it's like come on buddy I can do what you did in like a day of hyper focus like um yeah, yeah it's so incredible. definitely recommend going in and creating your brand kit oh yeah so one other tool that I want to mention I don't know Let's see, can you see this drop down menu from the top? It has like colors, HLSL. No, that's not visible. I'm not seeing it. A drop okay. down menu. Uh uh. Is okay. that ADH? I can see that highlighted. Um, oops, I opened something I don't want. Um, it's like so my cursor's on my like um bar of my desktop and I click no. on a little no okay sorry well there's there's something called dev swatch uh, dev swatch and you download it and then you can maybe you can see this do you see this little circle that's showing up like a color no <laughs> it's so funny I don't know what you can see sorry um, well, it's a great way to color match things like basically, oh. you know, the little dropper thing and and actually Canva has it too. Let's use Canva's. Um, so say I want to get a color from, let's see, this will be my last little tip. So I want, I really like these colors. And I want to grab one of these, a few of these colors for a for graphics. So I go back to my heading, I click on colors, I go to this add new color, and I click the little dropper. And then I come down here and I'm like, I'm trying to get this peachy color. And that, so that added it to a palette here. And then, hey, I might want to add another one from this. Get kind of a, uh, uh, I want a different new one. Yeah, why are you deleting my things? But you get the idea. Like say I wanted to edit a palette. I can click um, add a palette below and oh, I'm not gonna let me do this, sorry. And then I can drag, oops, I'll go on and drag. Okay, and then I press add. So I, sorry, <laughs> it was a little convoluted how I got there, but I created, I grabbed the color from up here. And then once I got the color I wanted, I clicked add here and it popped it down here. So I could take a photo and just grab colors from it that I like and create a whole palette from that. Wow, that's really cool. So like, I mean, so if you think about Asheville or you think about whatever region you're in and you want to get the colors of the region, yeah. that's a great yeah. way to do it. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then I guess I was going to show you because the presentation was a little awkward. So this presentation I did, um, and I just wanted to show it because basically I put in that a prompt in that magic design prompt for presentations. And it pulled all the images, all the gra like this little fun graphic, everything basically was already set up by the magic Canva. Um, in the stat? Uh, what? Even the stats? Um, no, that was me. I brought okay. that in. But, I was like, wow, that's um, amazing. It did, it did have, actually, I might have the earlier version because I wanted 
I wanted to save some of what it did because I liked some of the stuff it pulled, but I didn't use all of it. And actually, we have to run because it's four o'clock okay. too. Right. Um, well, yeah, it, you it, have it, it, it did this. pull graphic for stats for me when I originally really? put it up. Yeah. Okay, I love that. <laughs> You could record a tutorial and post it on the record on the the stat one because that would be really cool. Um, thank you so much for spending time with us. And I know yeah, everybody. I know some people it. find Canva like painful, but like it's really so fun if you just give your time self time to really play. Um, so I recommend playing when you don't have like something to get done because then you can really see all the things it can do. Yeah. But exactly. Yeah. And I only have done it on my desktop. I don't even do it on my phone because I can't see because yeah. my eyes are not so good these days. I don't do a lot, but it can be good for on the fly. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. Thanks for inviting me. Yay! High fives. We thank you so much. And we'll we'll see you out and about and around. And we learned a thing or two today. And uh, it's been awesome. Okay. Have a wonderful right. week. And I'll see you later. All right. Bye. Bye.